and should be right away. So the stage is yours now. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. So welcome to my second session uh, for today. Uh, we will create a team status indicator, right, uh, using a Raspberry Pi. Uh, first of all, a few sentences about me, Bendik Bergman again, uh, Power Platform Consultant at CRM Consultant here in Sweden. Uh, coming from development back background, .NET development uh, is where I've started, moved on to Angular or added Angular, and then moved on to Dynamics, um, CRM, CE, and model-driven apps and the Power Platform. If you want to contact me or get in contact, I have here my, my Twitter, LinkedIn, mail, and blog. So feel free to reach out uh, with any questions. And again, everything I will talk about now, uh, I have also a blog post about. So if you miss some steps uh, or I want to do it later, just uh, go in there and I really um, wrote it detailed uh, what to do. I can pop this uh, link later in the chat as well. So the, the agenda for this session is uh, first of all a bit of theory, um, what we will do and what we have to do to achieve our goal. And then we really quickly dive into the demo because we have a lot of stuff to do. Um, we will see, it's the first time I have this session, so I'm excited uh, how it will work. Uh, hopefully the demo gods are on my side. So what needs to be done? Uh, we have to assemble the, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, if, as you have seen earlier, uh, I have the yeah, unassembled parts. We have to assemble them. We have to install the software on the Raspberry Pi, and then we have to configure it. And if there is time, uh, we maybe can take a look at the software I wrote, which is a Node.js-based Node backend application. Uh, we will see how much time we have left. So the hardware, uh, I have a Raspberry Pi 0W, which is pre-soldered. So those pins are soldered uh, already uh, when I bought it. And it's a uh, zero stands for a bit um, smaller example. And W is that it's Wi-Fi or it has a Wi-Fi chip uh, on it. And I used to, or I bought the smaller one because the idea is to have it outside of my office here at home so that my wife and my son know when I'm uh, in a meeting uh, because then it should be wrapped outside. Uh, the next one is a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. So that's the, the adapter to the normal SD slot. Uh, and the SD card is already in my uh, my laptop. Then we have a blinked LED stripes, which uh, which are eight LEDs, RGB LEDs, which we can um, change the color to everything we want to. And then we have an AC adapter, uh, standard uh, Raspberry Pi AC adapter. I will plug it in directly under my desk. Choop. And the last part, which is optional, is a, a case uh, to um, have it a bit more secured. And um, yeah. Then we have in this Node.js application, we have an authentication flow uh, because we will have this Raspberry Pi. We, we don't have any input on this. We don't have any um, keyboard or mouse attached to it. So we have to connect via um, SS, uh, SSH to it, so we are putty. Uh, so, but still we have to log into our uh, account so that the software is able to get our status from, from the Microsoft Graph API. And this is done via so-called device code flow from Microsoft. So the application uh, requests a device code from the MS Graph API. And then this will be sent to the user by email if this is configured or be locked on the device itself. The user logs in on a different device. And if this login is successful, uh, the MS Graph API uh, answers uh, an authentication code. Uh, that's a bit wrong here. It's, it should be an authentication code to our Raspberry Pi. And this one is then be used in the future to authenticate against the MS Graph API and get the status of uh, team status of the locked in user, so to say. Um, I have done it now so that the login has to be done once every time the uh, Raspberry Pi is um, restarted. 
So if you plug off the AC adapter and plug it in again, you have to relog log in. Uh, this can be done. That is just once every x weeks, no matter how often you restart it. But uh, yeah. And then we have a standard software flow. So what usually happens in a certain amount of uh, time, uh, or I usually pull the MS Graph API once a minute uh, while debugging every 15 seconds. Um, but what we are doing is we, we send basically a request status to the MS Graph API. We get the team status of the logged in user, and then we set the color of the LEDs accordingly. And that's basically it with the theory. So let's go into our um, uh, demo directly. So I have to open the correct stuff. Uh, so let's switch to the other monitor. Here we are. I can move myself down again. Oh no. So um, as mentioned, I have uh, the or yeah, I have the SD card already plugged into my to my laptop. So the first step is to burn our image onto our, our, our Raspberry Pi image onto our um, SD card. There is an application for that. Um, it's Raspberry Pi Imager. Here you choose the operating system, and we want to have one which is the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. And the OS Lite doesn't has a desktop environment. So this saves some resources. And since we, in either way, don't have some um, external monitor plugged into our Raspberry Pi, we and we will connect via PuTTY, we don't need the, the UI. Uh, so to make it a bit faster, we, we take this one. Then we choose a storage, which is our SD card. And then we would cl click right here. I will not do that now because this takes some minutes uh, and we can save the time. So I've done this step already to the SD card. Um, so this one would download the operating system and install it onto our SD card and flash it uh, to the correct um, partitions it needs. So that's already done. Next step would be to activate SSH. So normally this one is because of security reasons, it's inactivated. Uh, so we have to activate it. And to do so, we go to the boot um, file or the boot um, uh, partition and create a new file. Where is it? Oh, yeah, I have to click here. So. A new, and then we create a text file text document and we call it SSH TXT for now. And where is it? There it is. You open it. Notepad and just write a space in it. And then we change the file to, oh, sorry. Uh, we change the file to be just SSH. If it's change back. Okay, maybe you could adjust a new file. Good start. Uh, text file SSH. Yeah, here we are. And we open it with. Um, open with. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, notepad is okay. Just a space, save. So now our SSH is uh, activated, so we can connect uh, to it via PuTTY. Next one is we have to uh, configure our um, Wi-Fi uh, because we want to, that the uh, Raspberry Pi is connecting to the Wi-Fi directly uh, when starting up. So we create a VPA supplicant.conf file. Let's see where it is. Here it is. We open it with. 
yeah, whichever browser you want or um, editor you want to. I use Sublime normally. Like that. And then we paste the following into this one. Uh, so I'm in Sweden, the country, the CTRL interface, it's always this one. Uh, the network SSID, in my case, it's Bergman. And then I will pop my password, which I uh, will not show, of course. Um, so here I would pop in my password now. I will just move it away. And then I save. So that's it. Uh, just uh, where do I put it? Uh, yeah, here it's good. So, and uh, next thing is if you are using a Windows machine, you have to install Bonjour uh, to be able to connect to your Raspberry Pi. I have already done this now. Um, and then we open Putty and we will add a new connection. And uh, uh, yeah so we we can actually i can take away this uh eject uh, sd card now and put it uh, or we can assemble um the raspberry pi let's see eject yes so let's see i will just take it out Give me a second. So here it is. Uh, SD card. We will put this one into our Raspberry Pi on the side. So here you can see there is the SD card. Then we will top up our LED stripes on top of the those pins. Let's put them in. And I will leave the case for now. So next is to put in uh, or oh, yeah the AC adapter here and now you can see it no maybe you can't no you can't there should be a LED somewhere yeah there it flickers a bit where are we there so it's on uh, hopefully connecting to the Wi-Fi uh, fingers crossed so we go into putty um and have to connect to uh, our raspberry pi so raspberry punk local that's a standard raspberry pi punk local sorry that's a standard and the standard is port 22 that's okay uh, and we will save it as uh, status light no save uh, so if you write pi at, we also use the uh, pi user to log in, which is the standard. Hopefully it's already up. So let's open. Yes, that looks good. No, no, not yet, unfortunately. Let's give him a minute. Yes, so now I have to accept the fingerprint of this uh, device. That's okay. And the password, uh, standard password is Raspberry. So the user is Pi and the standard password is Raspberry. Nice. Uh, so that worked. So now we are connected to our Raspberry Pi uh, via our putty. Next step. Um, we have to change some configurations because obviously we want to change the password um, and we want to change the name or the, the um, address because if you have several Raspberry Pis in your network, they can't have the same address, obviously. So we do a sudo and then open the res 
the config. Here we are. And the hostname and password we want to change. Uh, Let's find in system uh, look system password and hostname. Here we are. So password um, yes okay. Um, we will just for now take demo. Oh, so passwords have to be changed, and then we change the hostname. Uh, yes okay. And Raspberry Pi, we maybe make uh, Teams Raspberry Pi or status Raspberry Pi. Um, nice localization. We have to change the time zone so that the uh, timing is correct. Uh, so Europe is nice. Uh, London, nope. I'm in Sweden. Let's find Stockholm. Here we are. And next one, yeah, so that's it. We'll just wrong window uh, finish and we let it reboot. And while rebooting, we have to change this one here. Load because now it's not at Raspberry, but it's status status Raspberry Pi local. So the host name was changed. Good. Let's give him a minute. Um, so what we have to do next is we have to install one package uh, or one one uh, application on our Raspberry, which is Wiring Pi. Um, because one of our npm packages needs this wiring pi to access those pins uh, up here um, so it's needed that node.js can access those pins and it's um, it's an application or it's a it's something that only runs on the pi and that's also the reason why we have to install this npm package on the pi uh, so if you download my resource from github this npm package will not be included. So you can test it locally, but then we have like, I have mocked away those LEDs, this LED stripe here. Um, so it just writes in the console what we will do. So we have to change something in this application because this has to be done on the Pi. Um, so let's see if it's up again. Yes, and it's demo. And nice. That's good. So let's install this wiring pi. Uh, and this is via sudo to get uh, admin rights. apt get is to install packages on like Unix. Uh, and then we want to install it and it's wiring pi. And this one takes uh, some time uh, now. So we will in the meantime, take a look at the code maybe. So let me just open GitHub. Let's find it. My link. No, it's my window. Here it is. Is there an error? Oh, nice, it's already done. So we can proceed directly. Good. Uh, where were we? Time zones, we have varying pi, yes. So next up, we have to install Node.js. And to do so, we, we need our ARM version. And so every Raspberry, or they use ARM as a processor, uh, as a CPU, and they have different versions. So we have to install a matching Node.js version. Uh, and in this case, on the zero uh, Raspberry Pi, we have ARM version uh, 6.1. So, um, which you can see here. I don't know if I can zoom in, I can't. 
sorry about that. Maybe we can do it like this. Um, so if I write u name minus a, I get a long line. And at the end, you see the marked one is ARM version 6.1. Um, so this one we need. And then we go to Node.js. Hopefully it opens here. Uh, nope, it doesn't. Let's open it. And then we have to find the version that is matching our ARM version. And uh, I think it should be 11, which is the latest one. Yeah, Linux ARM 6.1. So those those are the ones uh, we this is the version we can install because if we go to 12 we don't 12 isn't support does not support uh, arm 6 any longer only arm 64 not arm 61 which we have so um version 11 is the latest one we can we can install so we go back to our pi and write a very long thing here, which is we get to get the package and then the URL to this package. Um, it's a target, a tar G set package. And if this one is downloaded, we have to unpack it. And this one is done with uh, tar minus X set F and then the, the file name. Um, so now it will be unpacked in our local folder. And then we have to copy it to our uh, global user local uh, so that everyone can use it. So we do a sudo to get admin rights, uh, cp for copy, and minus r for um, recursive, so every folder underneath. And then everything which is in this folder which we just have uh, unpacked to user local. Um, if this one is done, you can write node minus V and we get the version of node, which is installed, which is version 11.15. And then we can clean up a bit because if we um, look here, we have both the tar GZ file and the unpacked folder, which we don't need any longer. So we can just remove those. And now they are gone. Um, then we have to install Git because we will patch our software from GitHub. Uh, so we need Git to do so. So we will install Git. Uh, let's see here. Yes. So then we need sudo up get uh, update so that we update everything to the latest version. And then we have to install Vim to be able to paste stuff. Uh, low on battery. Come on. Yeah, it's not the fastest one. That's Raspberry. In the meantime, we can go to Azure and create our app registration. So the software needs an app registration to be able to request the um, uh, yes, uh, Crafts API. And this one should be in your tenant you want to have the uh, status from. So I'm in our company tenant at the moment uh, at um, uh, Azure Active Directory and app registrations. So I will create a new registration. Yes, so NP, no, not npm, sudo apt get install vim in the meantime. Uh, the name of the app registration should be uh, status indicator uh, demo. Uh, this is only, and here we have to choose accounts in any organizational directory because the the pi is 
different. So it's it's an uh, outside or application, so to say. Um, yes, exactly. Register. And then we have to add permissions. Uh, API permissions. And we have to add permissions. And here we want to add from the Crafts API, uh, Craft, Microsoft Craft, delegated permissions. And then we want to have uh, offline, offline access and uh, presence read, presence read. And we take user read, but this should be already, yes. So we have those permissions. Um, I have to clone the stuff. Let's see. And I'll Authentication, we have to do something there. Yeah, and here we have to say, uh, allow public client flow to yes over here as well. And then save. We go to the overview because we later need some information of this. Uh, so some of those are easier. Good. Next up is installing our software. Uh, so we make a directory uh, which is projects. So if we zoom in a bit, uh, mkdir is for creating a directory and we call it projects. We go into this projects folder, uh, projects, and there we uh, we do a git clone, and then we take uh, my the URL to my repository, uh, which is uh, let's see where are we on GitHub. Uh, I have or one which is status indicator, and then we can um, can take. This well. Um, Git not found. Nice. I'm going to install Git. I think I have. Let's try that again. Yes. So now it's cloned and we can go to status indicator and we can do npm install here, which will take uh, a bit. So after that, after this one is installed, we have to install this one package uh, I mentioned earlier. Uh, which isn't in the in the repository, uh, so node blinked uh, is it called because this one needs this uh, wire API uh, which you have installed earlier. So, and installing this one um, will generate quite a lot of output in our um, um, console here, but that's normal. Uh,
actually let's try to connect a second time now then i will be out locked out here we'll test it and... I think this npm install and the next install is the one which takes the longest steps. Nice. Let's test if we can log in once more. Yeah, nice. So then we install the npm uh, or npm install node blinked. And at the same time, we can do something else, which is nice. And we go to project status indicator and we have to change some source code. Uh, um, because in here, I mocked away this uh, one um, a node blinked module which we install at the moment. So we have to comment in some lines uh, here and there. That is done. Oh, yeah, sure. And then we have to create a dot environment um, file. And we have to paste in some stuff. Uh, where is it? I have to be in the ship insert. Yes. So this configuration is on my blog as well, but uh, just to, to take a look. So we need the tenant ID, which we get from. Um, uh, sorry, wrong browser. From here, which is the tenant ID. Go in here and delete this one. And shift insert. And then we need the application ID as well. Here. Uh, rest should be fine. I can go through it somewhere else we need. Um, the poll interval, so how often should we check in, it's in minutes, so every minute in this time. Uh, we, in this, I have configured that I don't poll on weekends, so the LEDs will just be off. Uh, I should poll between 7 and 17. Uh, that was important for the, uh, or the time zone was important for that one. Debugging, uh, we take true for now. Brightness, how bright the LEDs should be. Um, and how how long the device code should be um, valid in minutes. And then you, here you can configure whether or not it should send emails, uh, but we don't want that now. Uh, so let's see how far this has come. Yeah, still, still installing. Uh, so. Yeah, so those were the changes we have to do in the source code. It was just creating this environment file because this should not be in GitHub or in your repository and then changing something in the LED service uh, to really um, request the, the LED stripe uh, up here. Um, because as mentioned, this NPM package is only working on the Pi directly. So if you're testing on your local machine, this won't work. Therefore, I have commented it out. Um, so let's see how far this is. So next step after this one is installed or finished, uh, the next step is to build our software and then we can start the light and we have to log in, uh, obviously. So we are nearly there, nearly. Benedict, do you wanna take in some questions while this is loading? Yeah, sure, sure. 
So there's one question uh, which says, um, okay, there are a few actually. So did you buy the Pi and other components as a starter kit? No, I, I bought them uh, from a UK based website, Pimoni, I think. So they are like the top one uh, when it comes to Raspberry Pis, but they were separately. Um, but I have links uh, to every one of those in my blog post and I can pop in them then those in the chat as well. Yeah, when I bought my Raspberry Pi, I bought them separate as well. It just gives you more flexibility of yeah. what SSD you want, what uh, which Raspberry Pi you want. Uh, I did it with camera, so I had to get camera separately. So yeah, it makes sense. Uh, next one is, did you just say beauty? Oh yeah, uh, yes, he did. <laughs> um, get emotional. Okay, that's just comment. Uh, um, Pokata is getting, Bota is getting emotional looking at all the Linux and Unix memories. So cool. Yeah, me too. When I started yeah. my career, I started at Unix as well. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. I was oh. like a um, server administrator when I studied and this was okay. Unix only. Okay. So it was a bit for me as well, memories when I first started up this Pi and connected via SSH. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. We can see the passion. <laughs> um, so next question is from uh, Pavan and he is asking, does this work with the previous versions of Raspberry Pi? Um, yeah, I would say so. Uh, it should work. Um, the Node.js version, I I'm not sure how low you can go. So it works with Node.js 11. Um, I've not tested with any version underneath that. So it might be that at some point um, it, uh, the application needs some, some parts of Node.js which are not there in this older version. But other than that, it should work, yes. Yeah. So now the install is complete so we can do an npm run build to to create our um, the JS file uh, from our TypeScript to JS file which we want to to run later. And this will take one or two minutes. So if there are any other questions, I can take them now. But I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think that there are any more questions. But yeah. Uh... People, if you have any questions, drop it in the chat and then uh, I can get it across to Benedict. Yeah, as you can see, the, the Raspberry Pi, since it's a, a a small one, uh, the resources or the, the power isn't the best one. So this build takes some time, which is very fast on your local machine probably, or it was on mine at least, uh, but Raspberry Pi needs a bit time to process uh, those stuff. But now it's it's ready. So we can, we can start it, uh, the application, by using Node and then uh, the, the path to our JS file, which is in the current folder, Inside of that is a disk folder, and inside of that is a status indicator.js file. So if you start this one, um, and I open the correct website, because uh, there is a website which is called device login from Microsoft, and the status indicator will create this, um, this, um, yeah, this code, and then we have to pop it in here and then we have to log in and now I'm on my normal machine again. So um, I have to take the correct login. Uh, yes, except it now requests this permissions which we have configured earlier. Uh, I'm now in logged into status indicator demo and hopefully if we wait one or two rounds, it will uh, change the color to my status in Teams. So let's see. Just go teams. Fingers crossed.
Not doing anything. Nice. Uh, What's wrong? Stop it and rerun it. So let's see. Little little bit of debugging here. Um, status indicated. Yes. Don't you need okay. to build it again? Yeah, I have to rebuild it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you debug this thing? I debugged it locally. Uh, or I have added a lot of um, output to the console, which will be written um, to a log file as well. Um, but otherwise, I have debugged it locally to get the first draft, because everything that is not working on, on local is just the LED stuff. And right. so I mocked it away uh, and the integration to to the craft api i could just test for my local machine uh, which is yeah then you have visuals to the code and can just debug in it right yeah okay yeah but other than the console.log there is no the neat way of um, debugging not that it I'm on the raspberry pi no. yeah not that i know but i'm not an expert on raspberry pi either so it's it's like my first raspberry pi and my first project on raspberry pi so uh, yeah, it took me quite some time to write this Node.js application actually because the um, the stuff you have for a backend Node.js application from Microsoft isn't very good. They have uh, demos and uh, resources for uh, front end applications, but not for the back end ones, which is a bit annoying. Um, so let's see once more. Yes, here we are. So now it's, I don't know if you see it, but it's red. So if I change my status to green, you will see if this now works. So it now pulls every 15 seconds because I have activated um, uh, debugging. Uh, where is it? Here presenting, uh, change it to available. Hopefully it changes. So now I'm available in Teams as uh, at least. And let's see. It should pull in a few seconds. Or maybe it's not yet deep, but uh, then it takes a minute. Waiting. So in the meantime, what you what you could do is, and what you should do normally, because you don't want to log into the Pi and start your uh, indicator every time you restart your Pi. So you could uh, put it in auto start, uh, so that it, whenever you start your Pi, it automatically starts your um, uh, uh, status indicator as well, and. Uh, yeah, that would be the next step to do, but we will not have time for that. But I I wrote it on my on my blog post as well how to do that. Now oh, it's low. Why well, it takes so long? It doesn't pull any longer. Let's see what have we. Fifteen. It should pull every fifteen seconds. So it's still, yeah, now I'm available. Now it's green. Um, so now I could put this into my uh, case and hang it up outside and uh, my family would know when I'm available or not. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there are yes. a few more questions. Uh, yeah, sure. So sure. Andrew is asking, could it, could it be the, oh, you said it. So he's asking, Andrew is asking, could it be the environment file you set it to not run on the weekends? Perfect, uh, yes. Yes, that's true. And yeah, I think so, Andrew, you nailed it. So thank you for that. 
then uh, Pota is asking how do the SSH key work with the Azure authentication? Is this done automatically with the Azure API registration? Uh, which key? Sorry? SSH key? Yeah, so now um, what I'm doing is I connect via SSH to the Raspberry and the Raspberry connects via a node module or NPM package to the um, app register or to, to Azure AD. Um, and there we use this app registration, which we have reg registered earlier. So it sends a request um, using this app registration, but impersonating the user that has logged in uh, with the device code, uh, which we have done earlier. So it will save the, this authentication, this access token here, uh, is stored locally uh, in a local storage, and this will then be used um, to authenticate against uh, the Azure uh, MS Craft API. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, Buta, that uh, explained or answered your question. Next question is from Mayank Kumar. Can you configure or change pull intervals? You said it is 15 seconds. Um, yes, you can. Here in the environment uh, um, file, you have this poll interval, which is minutes. So you can say one minute, so every other minute, uh, or every other minute, or every third minute, uh, every five minutes. And if you have debug to true here, then it will poll every 15 seconds, uh, just to, to make it a bit faster, uh, your development. Can you, uh, one more? I'm go to that environment file. It was not a uh, little visible. Oh yeah, if yeah. You can, can just yeah. zoom in. People can see what all options are available. So we have um, first of all we have the tenant ID which we copied from Azure. We have the app uh, app registration ID which we copied from Azure. Then we have some endpoints, but those are the same for everyone. And then we have the poll interval, which is minutes. How often? Uh, every minute, every other minute, every third minute. Then we have whether or not to poll on the weekends, uh, when it should start and end to poll. Uh, if if you're outside of this time range, it will just um, uh, yeah inactivate the LEDs, so they will be off. And then you have uh, whether or not you want to debug the brightness, device code, request timeout is how long is this device code valid? Uh, so you have in this time time uh, in this case 20 minutes to log in, and then you have some configurations for email. So if this email is on, so to true, it, the Raspberry Pi will send an email to the recipient, uh, it's, it's the last configuration, email two, um, which contains the device code. Uh, so I have done it, for example, for a colleague. So I configured her Raspberry Pi, and then she got a mail to log in, and uh, she doesn't have to do anything with the Raspberry Pi, it just uh, shows her status. Um, but do so you have to uh, provide the SMTP host and all the other yes, SMTP yes, stuff? Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, the SMTP host, the port, the username, password, and the recipient uh, you mm -hmm. should provide. So now we can start it once more, then I'm ready. Uh, because now I have configured that it should also run on the weekends. Thank you for that. Uh, that's the one I missed. <laughs> so now it pulled. Now you can see it, it pulls uh, often uh, or more often and I'm available. So let's change my status back to um, like away. Uh, so now it's green, busy. So in 15 seconds, 15 seconds, it should change to, to red. Yeah, now it has set it to red, and then if I would be like away, it would go to, um, yeah, to some yellowish color. Now it's yellow. Yeah, that's it. Great. Yeah. Um, I think so. There's uh, yep, no more questions, and this was fantastic. I mean. Now I'm so eager to try this out and then put it right outside my door because my wife is like, she knocks like 
very little so that if i'm on call or anything in the meeting then it doesn't get heard by yeah. other people and then she comes in so it, i think so this is a very cool idea because everyone is working from home nowadays so it's a very cool idea to uh, get this project up and running create your own raspberry pi status indicator and put it outside the door and your family will thank it for that right yeah yeah, yeah. i have a small son he's 10 months so he doesn't get it yet but it will come <laughs> the time will come <laughs> yeah, yeah it will okay uh any other questions guys uh all positive feedback uh bota is really excited because he I, I i can feel that all his memories are coming back to him from the linux and unix days so, yeah right. uh yeah there's one more question uh, from dipesh saying what is the ideal size for the sd card yeah so so i i went with the 32 gigabyte gigabyte uh but that's way too much for this little software because i don't know this software has maximum 1 megabyte not even so and then you have no js and so on so i would say 4 or 8 gigabyte is uh, enough for it Mm -hmm. and you can take whichever sd um micro sd card you want so um now i i bought this one but um oh you don't see it any longer but uh i have used like an old one i i found uh, somewhere in the drawer uh, as well so it doesn't matter which sd card it is uh, it just has to be a micro sd card yeah good well uh thank you benedict for uh, showing us this awesome thing now i'm so excited to try it out myself cool um, thank you for having I, me yeah uh if there are no other questions then we can end the session and the recording